My name is Esther Kang and I'm 36 years old and I was born in Detroit, Michigan. My hometown is Los Angeles and I've lived in 11 different cities, um, but LA is home. I've lived in Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, Detroit, Dallas, Chicago, Baltimore, Brooklyn, Pittsburgh, and shortly Perth, Australia and Durban, South Africa. I've lived in LA, I think 15, 18 years on and off throughout a lot of my formative years. Growing up in LA, I've had bits and pieces of different places. I would say it was different kinds of culture shocks. So at first, my parents and I moved to Koreatown uh, January of 92, and then April 92 happened also. And that opened up a lot of conversations and very specifically more questions about race within our family. And back then it was family of three, now it's a family of five. That was a pretty big event and uh, moment within our family specifically. Then we moved to the uh, northern part of Glendale, lived the very 90s apartment, small apartment complex life with neighborhood kind of experiences with other kids who lived down the street. And then we moved to Texas after that for and lived there for about two, three years. And there I was the only or one out of two Asian kids in the entire school and then moved back to LA after that. So it was kind of variations of culture shocks, I think. It took me a long time to be proud of being Korean. And by that I mean like, I can feel it in my body when I'm in Korea, certain things that just click. But also similarly, when I'm in LA, certain things just click too. And kind of thinking through those threads, I think it's something I'll continue to come back to of like, not what is Korean American, but more, what is this process? What is this conversation of honoring my family and honoring many things that they went through? I feel it more and more as I get older of like, I am truly standing on their shoulders. I like distinctly feel it. And I think that's what being Korean American means to me. My family's experience in 92 in LA, Koreatown, I know fragments. Um, my memory, I think, remembers maybe 5% of it. My main memory is um, recalling waiting, waiting for my dad um, to come home. And my dad has never really talked about it in terms of what he actually saw. I actually only recently heard a, uh, two stories that he shared when uh, he and I met with one of his, his friends. And I was like, at 35, I was like, what? That's what you experienced? It was a very specific moment in within our family too so i think um, it had a lot of layers to it how do you balance your memories and conceptions and experiences in koreatown with your research while you're interviewing other people yeah in my research um, and general engagements with um, residents and members of the koreatown community specifically here in la i have very specific practices in play that um, focuses on setting aside assumptions and presumptions as much as possible. And um, it really focuses and hones in on what their experiences were um, and are. My work really focuses on really asking questions and addressing questions, understanding that it will be an ongoing process and it'll be an evolution. By that, I mean there's almost two, two specific categories. 
Um, one would be, what is an equitable process? That's an ongoing question over and over again here in the States. And then the second category would be design. What's ethical design? And what's an ethical design ethos and practice? So the two are in conversation with one another. And I would say that's been my career for about 10 years. And then very specifically thinking about that um, exclusively for now two and a half years. It's extremely important to me to think about what an equitable process is um, almost on a daily basis and to return to that over and over again, understanding that it's an ongoing evolution in and of itself. And the reason for that is because um, I believe an equitable process is possible and that an equitable process would take us closer at least to a more just and sustainable world or place here, at least if thinking about Los Angeles. And I think design has a very critical part in that. And design is political, it's cultural, it's social, and has profound impacts on our planet too. And design has a much broader reach from communication, arts, or design, all the way to um, the process is product, right? Strategy and things of that nature. And I believe broadly and very specifically, each require critical and sensitive um, understanding of their consequences. And through that, how is it shaping our everyday lives? Therefore, how we relate to one another, how we think about an idea, how we cope or address or avoid complexity as we become increasingly more interconnected and, and complex. So kind of the realities of how complex the, the world is shifting, as well as in that complexity, the injustices become much more both obvious and also discrete. I think these two realities really propel me to do this particular work. And the fact that design is seen as objective and it's not, it's very political. And so pushing that conversation forward. I would say I'm, I will always be drawn to Koreatown, um, specifically LA's Koreatown. I'm actually learning to hold on to memory while also letting go of that memory almost every day. And this particular season in life, the past two and a half years, I felt that more and more. I've realized I hung on to a particular memory of Koreatown, living in a way that's in honor of that memory, while also letting go and kind of let it, letting things flow, understanding that there are many other stories and experiences in Koreatown too. And um, what more of that patchwork looks like um, as opposed to my memory, therefore the only memory that kind of thinking that inadvertently took place. So it's been a little bit of honoring and preservation and letting go at the same time too. My name is Esther Kang and this is my Korean American story.